across the stars, through your speakers. Welcome, intrepid explorers of the cosmos, to another exciting episode of the Intergalactic Insider, your premier source for news, entertainment, and mind-expanding revelations from the furthest reaches of the galaxy. I'm your host, Felix Andromeda, broadcasting live from the state-of-the-art Galactic News Network studios on Proxima Centauri B. No matter if you're just starting your day under the glow of a binary sunrise or winding down as the last neutron star fades from view, we've got a stellar lineup in store for you. In today's episode, we'll be tackling some of the most fascinating and controversial topics that have been buzzing through the subspace channels. First up, we'll explore the trials and tribulations of interstellar couples embarking on long-term space voyages. From the strain on their mental and physical health, to the shocking rise of unconventional coping mechanisms, such as experimentation with alien pleasure parasites, and even forced evolution through DNA alteration, we'll leave no asteroid unturned. Next, we'll shift our focus to the realm of galactic politics, where the ongoing trade negotiations between the Vegan Collective and the Carnivorous Coalition have reached a critical juncture. Will these two disparate factions find common ground on import tariffs, or will their differences lead to a cosmic food fight that will echo through the ages? Our expert analysts are standing by to provide their insights. From there, we'll embark on a journey to the fringes of science, delving into the weirdest and most mind-bending theories that are pushing the boundaries of our understanding of the universe. Prepare to have your preconceptions shattered and your synapses rewired as we explore ideas that will make you question the very fabric of reality itself. And finally, we'll round out the episode with a look at the latest trends and technologies that are reshaping life across the galaxy. From artificial intelligence that can compose symphonies in the key of Quasar to nanotech that can rebuild entire planets from the ground up, we'll give you a front row seat to the marvels of the future. But before we dive in, a quick word from our friends at Nebula Noodles, the official snack of the Intergalactic Insider. When the void is vast and your stomach is empty, Nebula Noodles are the perfect fuel for your next cosmic adventure. And as always, remember, listening to the Intergalactic Insider may lead to sudden bouts of cosmic enlightenment, existential giddiness, and an uncontrollable urge to explore the infinite wonders of the universe, but trust us, it's all part of the adventure. So sit back, relax, and prepare to have your mind blown as we embark on another thrilling journey through the stars. Welcome, once again, to the Intergalactic Insider. Welcome back, my intrepid explorers of the cosmic expanse. In this segment, we'll be delving into the trials and tribulations faced by interstellar couples as they navigate the uncharted waters of long-term space travel. Joining me today are two distinguished guests, Dr. Zara Nebula, a renowned psychologist specializing in the mental health of space travelers, and Captain Orion Stardust, a veteran of multiple long-duration missions. Welcome to the show. Dr. Nebula and Captain Stardust, let's dive right in. Dr. Nebula, can you shed some light on the unique challenges interstellar couples face during extended space missions? Absolutely, Felix. But first, I must say it's a pleasure to be here. I've been a longtime listener of the Intergalactic Insider, and I'm thrilled to have the opportunity to contribute to the conversation. The pleasure is all mine, Dr. Nebula. Your work in the field of space psychology is truly groundbreaking, and I'm sure our listeners will benefit greatly from your insights. I echo those sentiments, Dr. Nebula. As someone who's spent a significant portion of my life among the stars, I can attest to the importance of maintaining mental well-being during long-duration missions. It's an honor to share the stage with you today. Thank you, Captain Stardust. Your experiences and perspective are invaluable to this discussion. I look forward to delving into the challenges and triumphs of interstellar relationships with both of you. Fantastic! With such an esteemed panel of guests, I have no doubt that this segment will be both enlightening and engaging for our listeners. 
Now, Dr. Nebula, back to my initial question. What are some of the unique challenges faced by interstellar couples during extended space missions? Absolutely, Felix. Long-term space travel can put immense strain on relationships. Couples must contend with the psychological effects of isolation, confinement, and the ever-present danger of the unknown. The lack of privacy and personal space can also exacerbate existing tensions and create new ones. That sounds like a recipe for disaster. Captain Stardust, as someone who's experienced these challenges firsthand, what's your take on the situation? It's not for the faint of heart, that's for sure. My partner and I had to learn to communicate effectively, set boundaries, and find new ways to maintain intimacy despite the limitations of our environment. It's a constant work in progress, but with the right tools and mindset, it's possible to make it work. This just in, a recent study conducted by the Intergalactic Space Agency reveals that a shocking 62% of interstellar couples have resorted to using alien pleasure parasites to cope with the stresses of long-term space travel. Dr. Nebula, can you explain what these parasites are and why couples are turning to them? Alien pleasure parasites, or APPs, are a controversial and potentially dangerous solution to the intimacy issues faced by spacefaring couples. These parasites release powerful neurochemicals that induce feelings of euphoria and heightened sensory experiences, but they can also cause addiction and long-term health problems. It's a desperate measure that reflects the severity of the challenges these couples face. That's a sobering revelation. Let's take a moment to hear from one of our listeners. We have a pre-recorded message from Lyra, who has experienced the impact of APPs firsthand. My partner and I thought apps were the answer to our problems, but we couldn't have been more wrong. What started as a way to reignite the spark in our relationship quickly spiraled into a nightmare of addiction and health issues. We lost sight of what truly mattered, our love and commitment to each other. The constant need for the parasites consumed us and we found ourselves taking dangerous risks to obtain them. It nearly destroyed our relationship and our lives. We had to hit rock bottom before we realized that we needed help. It's been a long and difficult journey, but with the support of each other and professional counseling, we're slowly rebuilding our lives and rediscovering what it means to truly connect with one another. If you're listening to this and struggling with similar issues, know that you're not alone and that there is hope. Seek help, communicate openly with your partner, and remember that no momentary high is worth sacrificing your health and your relationship. Thank you for sharing your story, Lyra. It's a powerful reminder of the importance of finding healthy ways to cope with the challenges of space travel. On that note, let's shift gears and explore some of the more unconventional methods couples are using to maintain their mental and physical well-being. Captain Stardust, there have been rumors circulating about couples experimenting with forced evolution through DNA alteration. Can you shed some light on this? It's true, Felix. Some couples are taking drastic measures to adapt to the rigors of long-term space travel. By altering their DNA, they hope to enhance their physical and mental resilience, allowing them to better withstand the challenges of the cosmos. However, the long-term effects of these alterations are still largely unknown, and many experts caution against such extreme measures. To provide a balanced perspective on this controversial topic, we reached out to Dr. Rigel Arcturus, a renowned geneticist, for his expert opinion. Let's hear what he has to say in this pre-recorded message. While the idea of enhancing our bodies to better cope with the stresses of space travel is certainly appealing, we must approach such endeavours with the utmost caution. Altering the fundamental building blocks of life can have far-reaching and unpredictable consequences. We've already seen cases of couples experiencing rapid and uncontrolled mutations, leading to devastating health problems and even death. Until we have a better understanding of the long-term effects of these alterations, I strongly advise against pursuing this path. Thank you, Dr. Arcturus, for that sobering perspective. It's clear that we still have much to learn about the limits of human adaptation in the face of cosmic challenges. Captain Stardust, on a lighter note, I've heard that you and your partner found some creative ways to maintain intimacy during your long-duration missions. Care to share any tips with our listeners? 
Well, Felix, when you're confined to a small space for months on end, you have to get creative. One thing that really helped us was setting aside dedicated date nights. We dim the lights in the observation deck, put on some soft music, and just spend time together, talking and enjoying each other's company. And let me tell you, there's nothing quite like the romance of stargazing while floating in zero gravity, sipping on a pouch of reconstituted champagne. It's the little things that keep the spark alive, you know? That's a beautiful sentiment, Captain Stardust. It's a reminder that even in the vastness of space, it's the human connections that truly matter. Well, that's all the time we have for this segment. Join us after the break as we explore the latest developments in the ongoing trade negotiations between the Vegan Collective and the Carnivorous Coalition. Trust me, you won't want to miss it. Welcome back, Space Cadets. It's time to sink our teeth into the juicy drama of galactic politics. The Vegan Collective and the Carnivorous Coalition are locked in a bitter battle over trade negotiations, and it's up to us to chew through the gristle and get to the meat of the matter. Joining me today are two esteemed guests, Ambassador Chlorophyllis from the Vegan Collective, a true herbivore hero, and Senator Rex Meatborn from the Carnivorous Coalition a carnivore's champion. Thanks for being here, folks. Thank you, Felix. I'm here to make sure the Carnivorous Coalition doesn't continue to beef up their exports at our expense. And I'm here to ensure that the Vegan Collective doesn't try to impose their kale-centric agenda on the rest of the galaxy. We have a right to our meat, and we won't let them butcher our way of life. Sounds like you both have a bone to pick with each other. Ambassador Phyllis, What's the root of the problem with the Carnivorous Coalition? Felix, the Carnivorous Coalition's reliance on animal products is a recipe for disaster. We need to encourage more sustainable, plant-based alternatives before we all end up in the cosmic compost heap. Ha! That's rich coming from the faction that once tried to genetically engineer a sentient soybean to infiltrate our ranks. Wait, a sentient soybean spy? That's a new one. Senator Meatborn, care to elaborate? It was during the height of the trade tensions. We caught wind of a plot to create a soybean that could blend in with our livestock and report back to the vegan collective. Luckily, we managed to weed out the imposter before it could cause any real damage. I guess you could say they were trying to plant a mole in your operation. But let's get back to the meat of the issue. Senator Meatborn, what's your beef with the proposed tariffs? These tariffs would be a real kick in the sirloin for our economies. We're open to exploring lab-grown meat alternatives, but we can't let the vegan collective dictate the terms of our transition. Lab-grown meat? More like Frankenstein's frankfurters. We need real change, not just a high-tech band-aid. Ambassador Phyllis, it sounds like you're not willing to meet the Carnivorous Coalition halfway. What do you say to those who argue that your demands are too extreme? Felix, we've been trying to negotiate with the Carnivorous Coalition for years, but they keep giving us the cold shoulder. It's time for them to realize that the future is plant-based, whether they like it or not. This just in, folks. Apparently, a group of activists from both sides have taken to the streets outside the negotiation chambers, armed with tofu blasters and meat cleavers. It's a regular food fight out there. I just hope they don't start flinging that lab-grown meat around. That stuff's expensive. And I hope they remember to recycle their protest signs when they're done. We don't want to add to the galactic garbage problem. Let's hope they can all sit down and break bread together when this is all over. But for now, let's hear from some of the folks caught in the crosshairs of this culinary conflict. We've got a message from Zora, a former meat industry worker from the Carnivorous Coalition who lost her job due to the proposed tariffs. Zora writes, I used to have a stable job as a Xenocow wrangler, but now I'm stuck serving soy shakes to ungrateful vegan collective tourists. I feel like I've been put out to pasture. Hang in there, Zora. I'm sure there's a bright future ahead for you in the exciting world of plant-based Xenocow wrangling. Just think of all the adventure and excitement you'll have chasing down those leafy green critters. And now, for a bit of historical context, let's turn to our resident space historian, Professor Cosmos. 
Thanks, Felix. You know, this trade dispute reminds me of the great tofu wars of the 22nd century. It was a time when the galaxy was divided between the soy syndicate and the meat masters. The conflict began when the soy syndicate attempted to flood the market with genetically engineered super tofu, causing the price of meat to plummet. The meat masters retaliated by unleashing a horde of carnivorous space locusts on the syndicate's soybean fields. In the end, both sides realized that they needed each other to survive and agreed to a truce over a nice, juicy, lab-grown steak. Wow, Professor Cosmos. It just goes to show that even in the darkest of times, there's always a chance for reconciliation and a good meal. Let's hope our leaders can learn from the mistakes of the past and find a way to bring peace to the dinner table. You know, Felix, maybe there is a way for us to work together. I've always been a fan of the Carnivorous Coalition's famous Andromeda ribs. Perhaps we could find a way to create a plant-based version that captures the same smoky, savory flavor. And I have to admit, the Vegan Collective's Cosmic Kale Chips are out of this world. If we could find a way to incorporate some of those flavors into our lab-grown meat products, we might just have a winning combination on our hands. Now that's the kind of thinking that could lead to a breakthrough. Who knows, maybe we'll even see a new era of culinary collaboration between the Vegan Collective and the Carnivorous Coalition. Stranger things have happened in this crazy cosmos of ours. Well, folks, it looks like we might just have a recipe for success on our hands. Who would have thought that the key to bringing the Vegan Collective and the Carnivorous Coalition together would be a shared love of delicious, innovative food? It just goes to show that even in the midst of a bitter trade dispute, there's always room for common ground and a little culinary creativity. But before we dive into the next segment, we've got to take a quick break to recharge our engines and refuel our minds. And speaking of refueling, have you tried the new Nebula noodles? They're the perfect snack for those long hauls through hyperspace, and they come in all your favorite cosmic flavors like Supernova Sriracha and Black Hole Barbecue. Trust me, your taste buds will thank you. So sit tight, space cadets, and don't touch that dial. We'll be right back with more mind-bending revelations, cutting-edge science, and all the latest trends from across the galaxy. And who knows, maybe we'll even have an update on the Vegan Collective and Carnivorous Coalition's newfound culinary collaboration. Stranger things have happened in this wild and wacky universe of ours. Attention all sentient beings. Are you tired of your mundane carbon-based existence? Introducing the latest in trans-dimensional travel, the Quantum Leap 5000. With just one push of a button, you'll be transported to a random alternate universe where anything is possible. Will you be a hero, a villain, or a sentient blob of goo? The possibilities are endless. But wait, there's more. Act now, and we'll throw in a complimentary get-out-of-jail-free card, redeemable in any universe with a compatible legal system. Don't let the fear of consequences hold you back from living your best multidimensional life. I never thought I'd say this, but being turned into a sentient gas cloud was the best thing that ever happened to me. Thanks, Quantum Leap 5000. I'm now the supreme ruler of an entire nebula, and I owe it all to this amazing device. Sure, I can't physically interact with anything anymore. But who needs a corporeal form when you have ultimate cosmic power? 10 out of 10, I would recommend. Disclaimer. Quantum Leap Industries is not responsible for any paradoxes, time loops, or unintentional universe destruction that may occur during use. Void where prohibited by the laws of physics. Welcome back, intrepid explorers of the unknown. It's time to venture into the outer reaches of scientific understanding and explore the ideas that are pushing the boundaries of what we thought possible. Joining me on this mind-bending journey are two brilliant minds. Dr. Quasar Quark, a theoretical physicist known for his groundbreaking work on interdimensional string cheese theory, and Professor Nebula Neutrino, a neuroscientist who has been studying the effects of cosmic radiation on the galactic brain. Welcome to the show, Dr. Quark and Professor Neutrino. Thank you, Felix. 
I'm thrilled to be here and to share some of the cutting-edge ideas that are keeping me up at night. Likewise, Felix. The universe is full of mysteries, and I can't wait to dive into some of the most fascinating ones with you and your listeners. Let's start with a real head-scratcher. Dr. Quark, you've been making waves in the scientific community with your theory of interdimensional string cheese. Can you break it down for us lay people? Certainly, Felix. The basic idea is that the fabric of the universe is made up of tiny, vibrating strings of cheese. Each string represents a different dimension, and the way they vibrate and interact with each other gives rise to all the matter and energy we observe. It's a tasty twist on the classic string theory, if you will. Fascinating! And what kind of cheese are we talking about here? Cheddar? Mozzarella? Gorgonzola? Well, that's the beauty of the theory, Felix. It could be any type of cheese, depending on the specific properties of the dimension in question. In some universes, you might have a sharp, tangy cheddar, while in others, you could have a smooth, creamy brie. The possibilities are endless. Mind-blowing stuff, Dr. Quark. And speaking of minds, Professor Neutrino, you've been studying the effects of cosmic radiation on the galactic brain. What have you discovered so far? It's truly remarkable, Felix. Our research has shown that exposure to certain types of cosmic radiation can actually enhance cognitive function and unlock previously dormant areas of the brain. We've seen individuals develop telepathic abilities, precognition, and even the power to manipulate matter with their thoughts. That sounds incredible. But are there any risks associated with this kind of exposure? There are always risks when dealing with the unknown, Felix. In some cases, we've seen individuals become overwhelmed by their newfound abilities and struggle to control them. There have also been reports of people becoming addicted to the rush of cosmic radiation and seeking out dangerous levels of exposure. It's a fascinating but potentially perilous field of study. This just in, loyal listeners, we've received word of a groundbreaking discovery from a team of researchers on the far side of the galaxy. According to their report, they've uncovered evidence of a parallel universe where time flows backward and entropy decreases over time. The implications of this finding are staggering and could completely upend our understanding of the fundamental laws of physics. Dr. Quark, what's your initial reaction to this news? If this discovery holds up to scrutiny, Felix, it would be a game changer. The idea of a universe where time runs backward has been a topic of speculation for centuries. But to have actual evidence of its existence is truly mind-boggling. It could open up entirely new avenues of research and challenge some of our most basic assumptions about the nature of reality. Absolutely stunning. And Professor Neutrino, do you think this discovery could have any implications for your work on the galactic brain? Without a doubt, Felix. If there are indeed parallel universes with different laws of physics, it's possible that the effects of cosmic radiation on the brain could be vastly different in those realities. We might find that exposure to radiation from a universe where time flows backward could have entirely novel effects on cognitive function or even grant abilities that we can't even imagine yet. The possibilities are truly endless. It's discoveries like these that remind us just how much we still have to learn about the cosmos and our place within it. And now, for a bit of historical context, let's turn to our resident historian, Professor Cosmos. Thank you, Felix. You know, throughout history, there have been countless discoveries that have challenged our understanding of the universe and forced us to rethink our place within it. From the realization that the Earth revolves around the sun to the discovery of quantum mechanics, each breakthrough has opened up new frontiers of knowledge and possibility. One of my favorite examples is the discovery of the first exoplanet back in the 20th century. At the time, the idea of planets orbiting other stars was purely theoretical. But when astronomers finally confirmed the existence of a planet around a distant sun, it forever changed our perspective on the cosmos. Suddenly, the universe seemed even vaster and more full of potential than we had ever imagined. It's incredible to think about how far we've come since then, Professor Cosmos. And with discoveries like the one we just heard about, it seems like we're on the cusp of another great leap forward in our understanding of the universe. And now, a personal story from one of our listeners. Astro, 
a young student from the Andromeda Galaxy writes, I've always been fascinated by the mysteries of the universe, but I never thought I could be a part of unraveling them. That all changed when I heard about the discovery of a parallel universe on your show. Suddenly I realized that there are still so many incredible things waiting to be found, and that I could be one of the people to find them. I've decided to dedicate my life to studying the cosmos, and I hope that one day I'll make a discovery that will change the way we see the universe, just like the ones you talk about on your show. Thank you for inspiring me to reach for the stars. Astro, thank you so much for sharing your story with us. It's messages like yours that remind us why we do this show in the first place, to inspire the next generation of cosmic explorers and to keep the spirit of discovery alive. Never stop reaching for the stars, Astro. The universe is waiting for you. Well, that's all the time we have for this segment, but don't go anywhere. After the break, we'll be diving into the latest trends and technologies that are shaping the future of the galaxy. From artificial intelligence that can compose symphonies to nanotech that can rebuild entire planets, we'll be exploring the cutting edge of innovation and what it means for life in the cosmos. Trust me, you won't want to miss it. Welcome back, trendsetters and tech aficionados. It's time to dive into the latest and greatest innovations that are taking the universe by storm. Joining me on this cutting-edge journey are two of the brightest minds in the business. Dr. Photon Flux, a renowned expert in artificial intelligence and nanotech, and Professor Nebula Nova, a pioneer in the field of interstellar fashion design. Welcome to the show, you two. Thank you, Felix. I'm excited to share some of the groundbreaking developments in AI and nanotech that are poised to change the way we live, work, and explore the cosmos. And I'm thrilled to be here, Felix, to talk about the latest trends in interstellar fashion and how they're shaping the way we express ourselves across the galaxy. Let's start with you, Dr. Flux. I've heard rumors about a new type of AI that can compose symphonies based on the vibrations of distant stars. Is there any truth to this? It's true, Felix. Our team has developed an AI algorithm that can analyze the unique frequencies and vibrations emitted by stars and translate them into hauntingly beautiful musical compositions. We call it the Cosmic Composer, and it's already creating quite a buzz in the art world. That's incredible. And what about nanotech? I heard something about self-replicating nanobots that can rebuild entire planets from the ground up. Is this the stuff of science fiction or science fact? It's very much science fact, Felix. We've made significant strides in the field of self-replicating nanotech, and we're now able to program nanobots to work together in swarms to construct complex structures and even terraform entire planets. The possibilities are endless, and we're just scratching the surface of what this technology can do. Mind-blowing. And Professor Nova, what's new in the world of interstellar fashion? Are there any trends we should be keeping an eye out for? Oh, absolutely, Felix. The biggest trend right now is cosmic couture, fashion that incorporates elements of the universe into its design. We're seeing everything from dresses made of starlight to shoes that leave a trail of stardust with every step. It's all about celebrating the beauty and wonder of the cosmos in our everyday lives. I love it. And what about accessories? Any must-have items for the fashionable space explorer? The hottest accessory right now is the gravity gem. A rare and precious stone that can manipulate the local gravity field around the wearer. It's the ultimate fashion statement and a practical tool for navigating the challenges of space travel. Everyone who's anyone in the interstellar fashion scene is clamoring to get their hands on one. Speaking of fashion challenges, let's take a moment to discuss some of the fashion faux pas of the future. Professor Nova, what are some of the most hilarious or disastrous fashion trends you've seen in the cosmos? Oh, where do I even begin, Felix? There was the supernova suit craze a few years back. People were wearing suits that were designed to mimic the explosive brilliance of a supernova. The only problem was that they were so bright they practically blinded everyone around them. 
Then there was the black hole dress trend, where fashionistas wore dresses with a built-in singularity that threatened to swallow up anything that got too close. And don't even get me started on the asteroid belt, a disastrous attempt at creating a fashionable waist accessory that ended up causing more collisions than compliments. Those sound like real fashion catastrophes, Professor Nova. But surely there must be some technological mishaps as well, right? Dr. Flux, any stories of smart clothing gone awry? Oh, plenty, Felix. Just last month we had a case of a malfunctioning mood suit that got stuck on angry red mode and nearly started a diplomatic incident at a galactic summit. Then there was the chameleon cloak fiasco, where a batch of faulty cloaks caused their wearers to blend in a little too well with their surroundings. We had people accidentally sitting on each other left and right. And who could forget the infamous Stardust Stilettos debacle, where a glitch caused the shoes to leave behind a trail of slippery stardust that resulted in a rash of comic pratfalls and bruised egos across the galaxy. Ha ha ha! Those are some truly epic fashion and tech fails, folks. I guess it just goes to show that even in the future, we're not immune to the occasional cosmic blunder. But hey, that's part of the fun, right? After all, what's the point of pushing the boundaries of fashion and technology if we can't laugh at ourselves when things go a little sideways? This just in style mavens. We've received word that a new line of smart fabrics has just hit the market and they're taking the fashion world by storm. These high-tech textiles can change color, texture, and even shape in response to the wearer's mood and environment. Dr. Flux, what do you make of this new development? It's a game-changer, Felix. By integrating AI and nanotech into fashion, we're creating garments that are not only beautiful, but also functional and responsive to our needs. Imagine a spacesuit that can adapt to different planetary conditions or a dress that can change its style based on the occasion. The possibilities are truly endless. And Professor Nova, how do you see this new technology shaping the future of interstellar fashion? I think it's going to revolutionize the way we think about fashion, Felix. No longer will our clothes be static, lifeless things. They'll be dynamic, interactive works of art that reflect our individuality and enhance our experiences. It's an exciting time to be alive and fashionable. And now, for a bit of historical context, let's turn to our resident historian again, Professor Cosmos. Thank you, Felix. You know, throughout history, fashion and technology have always been closely intertwined. From the invention of the spinning wheel to the rise of synthetic fabrics, technological advances have shaped the way we dress and express ourselves. In the early days of space exploration, fashion was all about function over form. Astronauts wore bulky, utilitarian spacesuits designed to protect them from the harsh realities of the cosmos. But as our understanding of the universe grew and our technology advanced, so too did our fashion sense. Today we stand at the precipice of a new era in fashion, one where our clothes are not just a reflection of our style, but an extension of our capabilities. It's an exciting time to be alive and to witness the marriage of fashion and technology on a galactic scale. Thank you for that fascinating insight, Dr. Threads. It's clear that the future of fashion is as vast and full of possibilities as the universe itself. And now, a personal story from one of our listeners. Stella, a young fashion designer from the Andromeda Galaxy, writes... I've always dreamed of creating clothes that could make a difference in people's lives, but I never knew how to make that dream a reality. That all changed when I heard about the new smart fabrics on your show. Suddenly, I realized that I could use my love of fashion to create garments that not only look beautiful, but also have the power to change lives. I've started experimenting with these new materials, and I'm already seeing the incredible potential they hold from adaptable emergency suits for first responders to therapeutic garments for people with sensory processing issues. The possibilities are endless. Thank you for inspiring me to think beyond the bounds of traditional fashion and to use my talents to make a real difference in the universe. Stella, thank you so much for sharing your story with us. It's a powerful reminder of the impact that fashion and technology can have when they're used to create something truly meaningful.
Keep dreaming big and pushing the boundaries of what's possible. The universe needs more visionaries like you. Well, folks, that's all the time we have for our fashion and technology segment, but don't touch that dial. We'll be right back after a quick break for some classified ads from our sponsors across the galaxy. Stay tuned, because when we return, we'll be bringing you our final segment of the show, the Interstellar Weather Report. From solar flares to asteroid showers, we'll keep you informed and prepared for whatever the cosmos has in store. So sit tight, and we'll be back in a cosmic minute. Attention all space pirates, smugglers, and galactic outlaws. Are you tired of constantly looking over your shoulder, wondering when the intergalactic police will catch up to you? Well, fear no more. Introducing the Cosmic Cloaking Device 3000, the ultimate solution to all your law-evading needs. I used to be like you, always on the run, never able to enjoy my ill-gotten gains. But ever since I got my hands on the Cosmic Cloaking Device 3000, my life has changed for the better. Now I can park my stolen starship right next to an intergalactic police cruiser, and they won't even know I'm there. I can finally enjoy my space margaritas in peace without worrying about being caught. But don't just take my word for it. The Cosmic Cloaking Device 3000 comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not completely satisfied with your ability to evade the law, simply return the device for a full refund. Although if you're a wanted space criminal, I wouldn't recommend showing up in person to return it. So, what are you waiting for? Get your Cosmic Cloaking Device 3000 today and start living the carefree life of a galactic outlaw. Available at all participating black market dealers. Remember, if the intergalactic police can't see you, they can't catch you. Welcome back, Space Cadets. As we rocket towards the end of our intergalactic adventure, it's time to check in with our resident astro-meteorologist, Comet Channing, for a side-splitting look at the cosmos' crazy weather. Comet, thanks for orbiting by once again. Thanks, Felix. It's always a meteorical pleasure to be here. Speaking of meteors, let's shoot straight into the absurd weather phenomena happening across the universe. Ooh, I'm ready for this cosmic forecast. What's the latest space weather scoop, Comet? Well, Felix, it seems the planet Zorgax 9 is experiencing a rare spaghetti tornado phenomenon. That's right. The planet's surface is being bombarded by flying strands of cosmic pasta. It's like the universe decided to have an intergalactic Italian feast. Residents are advised to wear protective marinara suits and carry extra parmesan cheese for safety. Ha ha ha! That's definitely a cosmic catastrophe. Any other bizarre weather events we should know about? Oh, absolutely. In the Andromeda Galaxy... A massive glitter hurricane is causing quite the ruckus. It's like a cosmic version of a Lady Gaga concert. The storm is raining down sparkly space dust, turning everything it touches into a fabulous, shimmering spectacle. Talk about a cosmic makeover. Wow, that's out of this world. I guess you could say the universe is putting on quite the meteor shower for us. Speaking of which, let's take a moment to answer some weather-related questions from our lovely listeners. Absolutely. Our first question comes from Xyloth from the planet Bleepblorp. Xyloth asks, What's the best way to protect my tentacles from the scorching heat of my planet's triple suns? Well, Xyloth, I recommend investing in a high-quality SPF 3000 tentacle sunscreen and fashioning a stylish parasol out of meteorite fragments. It's like having a tiny asteroid belt shielding your tentacles from the sun's cosmic wrath. Stay cool and look cool, my friend. That's some stellar advice, Comet. Now, let's take a look at the long-range forecast for the upcoming intergalactic holiday, the Cosmic Confluence. Ah, yes. The Cosmic Confluence is always a meteorological marvel. This year we're expecting a dazzling display of Aurora Borealis fireworks, courtesy of the colliding neutron stars in the Gamma Quadrant. It's like the universe's version of a cosmic rave. But be warned, space travellers, the cosmic winds will be strong enough to blow your astro socks off. So make sure to strap on your gravity boots and hold on to your moon pies. Now that's what I call a stellar celebration. And now, Comet, it's time for our new segment, the Space Weather Word of the Week. What have you got for us today? Ooh, I've been waiting for this moment, Felix. Today's Space Weather Word of the Week is Cosmic Confetti. This term refers to the colourful, shimmering debris left behind by a comet's tail as it streaks through the universe. It's like the cosmos is throwing a giant party. 
and the comet is the guest of honour, leaving a trail of celestial glitter in its wake. So, if you ever find yourself caught in a cosmic confetti storm, just remember to make a wish and enjoy the dazzling display. Cosmic confetti, I love it. It's like the universe's version of a ticker tape parade. Any final thoughts or predictions for our listeners, Comet? Just remember, folks, in space, no one can hear you scream. Unless you're screaming with laughter at the universe's wacky weather. It's like the cosmos is one big cosmic comedy club, and we've got front row seats. Stay tuned, stay curious, and always keep a cosmic umbrella handy. You never know when you might need to shield yourself from a meteor shower of giggles. Wise and witty words, as always, Comet Channing. Well, space weather enthusiasts, that brings us to the end of another episode of the Intergalactic Insider. As we sign off, I'd like to leave you with this little nugget of wisdom. When life gives you cosmic lemons, make a supernova-sized batch of lemonade and share it with the entire galaxy. Because in the end, laughter and a sense of humour are the best tools we have to navigate the crazy, unpredictable and utterly hilarious universe we call home. Until next time, keep your telescopes pointed towards the stars, your minds open to the wonders of the cosmos, and your funny bones ready for a good tickle. This is Felix Andromeda, your intergalactic guide to the wild, weird, and wonderful, signing off with a cosmic wink and a smile. See you on the flip side, space explorers!